Hey, what's going on guys? This is Bunny Muffins. We are back with the best comps for set 7.5. I actually did a ton of research for this one. I looked over all the data. I looked over what all the top players are playing and I settled on a tier list, which we could see right over here. So before we get into the tier list, I will mention that I will be going over how to play every single one of the compositions, what champions are best in the composition, what items to use, and also how to position them and how to play down here. So we'll get into that right after the summary. So starting off in the S tier, we have Olaf reroll. Ironic that in the new set, both Zaya and Olaf are at the top in the S tier right now. This is the Olaf assassin build or Olaf reroll build. Zaya is with guild or rage wings. But we do have a new comp right now, and this is the dragon comp. They made an update to the new set where you could play multiple dragons. We'll get into how to play every single one of these comps, what each of the champions are after we go through the summary, so definitely stick around for that. In the A tier, we have Pantheon, Dragonmancer Lee Sin, Mirage Deja, Jade, and Built Different. In the B tier, we have Guild Zippy, Dark Flight, Graves and Naya, and Lagoon. And then in the C tier, C tier is generally what I say I wouldn't recommend playing. But we have Astrals and Ken near there. These are two, like, they're okay, but I feel like everything else is just better right now. But who knows? Maybe someone discovers a better way to play them as the week goes on. Everyone has to remember that right as a set comes out, things are going to be a little crazy. And soon enough, everyone will figure out the best way to play every single build. But starting off in the S here, we have Olaf Warrior Reroll. I guess it's a little bit different. We're not doing the full four scale score and people are favoring the warriors right now. Uh, four to six warrior is what I've seen, but if you do have assassin spatula, you definitely want to play the four scale scorn version like the old Olaf from before. But we have like a duo carry right now. Both Olaf and Pantheon are pretty big threats. You do want to reroll for Olaf three star at level seven and pretty much the requirements of this comp is just lots of Olafs. So that's not really too big of an issue for most people. Now let's go over the items. A lot of people like Pantheon as a tank. I like him as a hybrid tank and damage dealer. So Bloodthirster, I'd say that's pretty much standard for every Pantheon build. And then what I like is doing Titan's Resolve and Warmog. Some people like having two full tank items. Some people like even having three full tank items. But I think mixing and matching the two is the best for Pantheon right now because he is both a damage unit and a tank unit. So I want to take advantage of both of those. For Olaf, right now I'm liking Bloodthirster, Giant Slayer, and Runon's Hurricane. I always like having one type of healing on my carries, but if you get healing from the augments such as Celestial Blessing or Thrill the Hunt, you could go ahead and play three damage items instead. Item holders I like are Yon, Wukong, and Jax. And then for how to play, obviously you're just slow rolling for Olaf three star at level seven. If you guys don't know what re-rolling is or any of the leveling patterns, I do have a guide on my website. It's at the very top when you go there, bunnymuffins.lol, and then click coaching up here and it'll tell you at which stage to level up on. But back to items for Olaf, Quicksilver is also good, Rage Blade, RFC, the Sniper Augment's really fun with Olaf, Runons I like a lot, Hodge, Death Blade, Titan's Resolve, Giant Slayer, Assassin Spatula. And then items for Pantheon, Bloodthirster, Titans, Warmogs, Gargoyle, Stoneplate, Scale, Scorn, Spatula is amazing on him, Hand of Justice, Redemption, and Protector's Vow. As you guys can see, I'm giving you guys both damage and tank options, so you have a lot of options for Pantheon. I'd say just prioritize the Olaf items and then slam whatever you can for Pantheon. The core of this build is actually only four warriors, so you could swap out a lot of different things here. Here I'm playing kind of the mage version, but you could drop the mages to go up to six warrior. You could go up to four scale scorn. There's a lot of different options you can choose, but I like doing the mages because Lilia is both a scale scorn and a mage, and Silas gives Olaf bruiser and coincidentally is a mage as well. And then Zoe is just one of the best units with mage buff in the game because she gives so much support for your team. She gives you a tank, she gives you invulnerability. She does damage, she CCs the whole board. There's really not much she doesn't do, but you could always take out Silas and Zoe to throw in something like Hecarim and Bard in order to just play Bard as a strong unit and then Hecarim as a scale scorn to tank for your team. Onto the next build, we have Zaya Ragewing or Guild Zaya. I think the Guild Zaya version's a bit better right now, so you go six Ragewing for Guild. And the reason why you have so many Rage Wings is because of Shivana. Dragons give plus three of a trait. And there are a lot of items here. So here's what's going down. Shivana, she's going to be your late game bomb, obviously, because she's a eight cost unit. And full AP is amazing on her. Ionic Spark, Morella Namicon to AoE Burn, and then the Archangels for stacking up later into the game is exactly what you want on her. Zaya, just any attack damage and attack speed items will do. And then Jace, Jace is a really good tank. I want to see some Jace damage builds, but right now, 
He's just not dealing that much damage compared to the utility you get from him from tanking, so I mainly am using Jace as a tank right now. I like rounding out the comp with Rakan and Hecarim to get the other Rage Wings, and then Bard belongs in every comp, and especially in a guild comp, he's a no-brainer to add in. And then Sejuani gives Cavalier to Hecarim, and Twitch gives Swift Shot to Zaya, and Twitch also gives Armor Penetration, so if you're running Twitch, you're not as reliant on something like Last Whisper as much. The great thing about this composition is that there aren't really any requirements. You could switch in and out a lot of units because guild's so easy to plug in and out. And also with Rage Wings, you could drop down to four Rage Wings. You don't even need to play Shivana if you don't hit Shivana. What people are doing right now is you're using just any frontline dragon you can. So I've seen Shio Yu frontline. I've seen Ida's frontline. Pretty much any tank dragon will do up there. You could even try the new dragon, which is Terra, which is also a legendary if you can't find Shivana. To play this comp, standard leveling. Again, if you don't know standard leveling, check out the leveling guide, and I'll be releasing a video on that in the future, so do subscribe below if you have not already to get notifications for that. But now we're going into some newer comps. So only drags, this is the four dragon comp. Some people do it with three dragon, but four dragons is better. It's just a little more difficult to play. As you guys can see, we're <laughs> <laughs> We're running a lot of legendaries here, and they're obviously 8 cost dragons, but this comp is super, super good. It's probably like one of the highest capped boards in the game, and the reason why is because you're just running all the best units, and you get Terra's monolith buff, which means that you take reduced damage on each of the legendary dragons. There's just no better combo to put this on, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's really easy to play. The only issue is it's not going to be playable in that many games. So you need to get a little lucky to get this composition because you need Econ Augments, you need high HP, and you need lots of gold in order to do something like a fast 9 in order to get the full value of this comp. You may notice we have 9 unit slots here, but that's because 4 dragons gives you an extra slot, so this is actually a board you could fit on level 8. If you do end up hitting level 9, just add in a bard. As for items, AP items goes on Ao Shin. He's going to be your main damage carry. And then all tank items, the main one's going to be Terra if you have Terra 2 star. If not, Idis is a good secondary tank. And do remember, you do get an Idis Shimmer Scale items, so you can put that on whichever carry that fits best on. Uh, the only bad ones are kind of like the attack speed, attack damage ones, because you're mainly a AP type of build, because both Aoshin and Shivana use those stats. Special Blessing, you just need healing in the comp. Ascension's good because you have a lot of tanks. High end shopping for obvious reasons, and second win because your dragons don't die is of huge value as well. Fun fact, second win's typically good whenever you have really tanky units, because the only time you don't get value from second win is if someone dies before it heals you. So if you have really tanky guys, you're always going to get value from it. Onto the A tier. A tier is still really solid. It's just not the best, but you're going to be playing a lot of the A tier comps as well if you're flexing. We're going to start off with Pantheon. He fits in actually two builds, so Whisper or Jade. We're going to do the Whisper version first. I'd say they're about equal in terms of power. Maybe Whispers is like slightly, slightly better. It depends what units you hit though. So Pantheon going to be your main carry in the front. Similar items to before, we have Gargoyle, Stoneplate, Bloodthirster, and Warmogs. Siphon is going to be the main damage dealer. Bloodthirster, Rageblade, and Titans Resolve on him. Bloodthirster, Rageblade, and Titans Resolve on him. And then for our main tank, we have Silas. I like adding in Protector's Vow on him because he gives a lot of shielding to your team. Because you have a lot of good guys on your team. You have like three dudes up front, which could all do a lot. Uh, Sunfire is really good, and then a lot of people I've been seeing experiment with ZZROP Portal in the early game, so if you don't have a holder for that item, you could just drop it on Silas. If not, you could just fit in any generic tank item here, such as Bramble Vest, Stone Plate, Dragon's Claw, things like that. You round out this comp at the bottom with Zyra and Bard, and that's going to give you 6 Whispers, 2 Warrior, 2 Evoker, and 2 Mystic. And it's just really balanced because you have two CC units in the back. Seraphine's giving shielding to your whole team. You also have the Protector's Valve giving shielding to your team. Yasuo CCing as well. Every one of these units does something, which is why this comp is really good. Onto the next build, we have the Jade build. They changed Jade a little bit. It's now a 3-5-7-9 synergy, which means you could play only 5 Jade now, which is really nice. I like putting Pantheon up in the front. Whispers means he just shreds through everyone's armor and magic resist. Shio Yu is going to be the main damage dealer. Edge and Knight is just so good on this champion, so I always build it on Shio Yu. Bloodthirster, for obvious reasons, it's just Shio Yu does huge attacks and just heals up so much. But again, if you get something like Celestial Blessing, you don't need Bloodthirster on these champions. Titan's Resolve or like a Giant Slayer could fit into the third slot. And then in the back line, you just have all support units. 
Yasuo, great CC, and is a leftover item holder. Soraka, Soraka heals your HP. Seraphine does the same shielding from before. Zyra, the CC. And then Karma's just there because she's a Jade and a Dragon Mancer. But you can honestly switch Karma for any Jade unit depending on if you get like a trait augment or something like that. Standard leveling for this one, the core is just going to be Pantheon and Zyra, one Dragon and Seraphine. And then augments, Celestial Blessing, obviously really good so you don't have to build so many Bloodthirsters. Big Friend's good. Thieves Gloves is nice because it's good on Yasuo. Weak Spot because you do a lot of physical. Ascension, your team lives a long time, so it's good to take advantage of that. Thrill the Hunt, great for Siphon because he just dashes and then hits and kills someone. Uh, so, so if you get this, you don't need the Bloodthirster again. And then Second Win, just really good because Pantheon's not going to die, and Silas isn't going to die, so they just end up getting the value from the heal. Onto the next build, we have Lee Sin Dragonmancer. So this one, I thought this wouldn't be that great, but Dragonmancer is just really easy to play right now, so that's why he's doing really well. There's also two different builds. You could do the build you see right here, or you can sub in Aoshin for 6 Tempest. Tempest actually gives useful buffs for Lee Sin now. In the previous set, I believe it only gave attack speed, but now it gives a percent damage increase instead so it's incredibly good on Lee Sin. Obviously you put the Dragon Mancer buff on him because he's the only unit you care about. The three items I like on him is one healing items and two damage items and the one that gives a lot of healing is Hextech Gunblade and it's better than Bloodthirster because you don't have that strong of a front line so him healing your team is really really valuable. And then Jeweled Gauntlet and Infinity Edge is just the most damage on a two item combo for Lee Sin. Obviously you can play other items such as Hand of Justice, Archangels, and things like that. Uh, I, th I believe I have a list down here for other items you could build on him. The way to play Lee Sin is reroll for Lee Sin 3 star at level 7 and you could also pick up Volibear 3 star but he's not really that important. You really only care about the Lee Sin right now. The best augment by far is Eye of the Storm. That's why I put him in the center here. It's like I just assume we're gonna have it. And then Tempest Crown, Celestial Blessing, Jeweled Lotus, Axiom Arc, Thrill the Hunt. These two are especially good because Lee Sin just kills so many things. So he just gets a reset whenever he casts a spell. Let's go on into the next comp. This is Mirage. So we played Mirage before, but it's a little bit different now because there are new Cavalier units, mainly just Rel. Uh, the rest of the build, I believe, is the same from before. Deja's going to stack attack speed and ability power. Nunu going to be your main carry. I like getting Nunu 3 star, so I like doing a roll at level 8 for Nunu 3 instead of leveling up to level 9 if you have time to do that in your game. Warmog's obviously really good because Nunu gets a bonus damage buff when he has higher health than the enemy he's eating. Redemption's good for healing him and Ionic Spark, just solid item to help support Deja. After that, I like stacking all the Cavaliers and Mirages because those are the two traits that you're focusing on the most but you could flex the Cavaliers for other things. You could also play stuff like Idis and Leona for your tanks instead of all these Cavaliers. You do that in games where you hit Idis really easily or if you're not getting any Nunu so you can't realistically go for Nunu 3. Last but not least, put any leftover items you have onto Yasuo. I know Mirage variant is different every game, so I do have some quick tips down here that you could take a look at if you guys are curious on how to adjust the team comp based on the different Mirages. Going on into the next build, we have Jade plus a random carry. In this case, it's going to be Pantheon, so it's similar to the build before. We also have Siphon here, so this is actually a two dragon comp. Again, Pantheon's going to do both tanking and damage in the front with Titan's Resolve, Gargoyle Stoneplate, and Bloodthirster, Shio Yu, Bloodthirster, Edge of Night, Titan's Resolve, and then Siphon. Giant Slayer, Titan's Resolve, and Bloodthirster. If you guys cannot tell yet, you really want a healing augment because then it saves you three items and you could just build literally anything else if you get like Celestial Blessing, for example. The interesting thing about this build is that you can flex like pretty much all of the units. The only mandatory ones are like Shio Yu and Soraka. You could play all sorts of dragons as well. So instead of Siphon, you could play Shivana. You can mix in Idis to tank instead of Pantheon. You could do so many different things with this build. It's actually incredible. So it is a little more difficult to play. This isn't the only build. It would take too many pages to fill out every single build you could do with Jade right now. Uh, but other than that, you do standard leveling because you're going for four cost carries. But there's really not much else to add here. Everything's going to be dependent on your game and what units you're hitting. And now we go on to the next build. We have Built Different. So I'm adding in Built Different. I'm going to add Double Trouble later because I know a lot of people were requesting that from before. So we just have eight units in here. The only synergy we actually have is Guild from Bard, 
but it's okay bard is bard he's always going to be good and in this build we have the main carry as graves you could also do nyla there are a lot of different options down at the bottom here so there's no like set carry you could use zaya as well pantheon's good too you really just have to see what units you're hitting to star them and then build the rest of your team around that so the way to play build different is after you get your carry set up you need to identify who your best tanks are so during the game before you find your final comp you have to ask yourself like who is the best Cavalier, who's the best Bruiser, and who's the best Guardian. Sometimes the best Bruiser is going to be Braum, sometimes the best Bruiser is going to be Jax, sometimes it's going to be Silas. It really depends on what team you are running. Just make sure you're not falling into, because obviously that ruins the whole point of the build different augment. Again, if you're running Zaya carry, you obviously don't want to run Hecarim, you'd run something like Nunu instead. And obviously for the augments, you need build different. Portable Forge is good because you're focusing on one or two guys. Celestial Blessing, just great in general right now. Uh, level up's good to get access to the 4 and 5 cost units. Weak spot's great because most of the built different comps are built around attack damage. Same reason why best friends is good and high end chopping is the same thing as level up. Now onto the B tiers. B tiers are still good. You just need stronger starts for them. And there are a bit more requirements to get the builds really working. So for example, on this one, you want some guild augment or an early zippy 2. And it's just much harder to play these comps without those requirements for example for some reason the image for zippy isn't here but zippy's in the middle there this is the build with seven guild there's not much flexibility here you just play seven guild plus shivana shivana is just the best shapeshifter to pair up with jace so that's why you run her so both zippy and jace are both your main tanks and your main dps which is a little weird so it's both two well-rounded champs that are doing both things so it's kind of like a duo carry comp bard's providing cc twitch is providing armor penetration sejuani's just there because she's a guild and Shivana, well, she's Shivana, so she's going to be doing a lot of stuff no matter what, even without items. But for Jace and Zippy, you really can build almost any item. You just have to make sure you have a balance between tankiness and damage. So to play this comp, standard leveling, you're looking for four cost Jace. Uh, he's the main carry in the guild comp. Zippy's more of a tank. And the core is seven guilds, so you could run random stuff before you hit Shivana. Onto the augments. Guild augments are really good, obviously. Celestial Blessing, Weak Spot, Ascension's nice because both Jace and Zippy live for a long time because they are really tanky and have sustain. Radiant Relics and Portable Forge. Whenever you have like one or two champions that you're focusing on, these two augments become much better. For example, if you run like a dragon in your comp, these are generally really good to have. Onto the next build, we have Dark Flight Swain or Rengar. So we have two different builds here. Dark Flight, probably my favorite trait of the set. Right now, people are doing ZZ Rot Sacrifice on their Dark Flight units. So the other option you have is the Protector's Bow. Both are good, but I'm hoping we get more variety going into the future because I would like to see more than just like tank or support items on them. I'd like to see like maybe some damage item works on everyone, which would be really cool. Maybe like Hand of Justice would be pretty neat. Swain's going to be your main tank. He's going to be a drain tank, so Morello, incredible on him. Gargoyle, Stone Plague, probably the best solo tank item in the game. And you want to keep two items on Swain because the Dark Flight thing pops. So unless you get the perfect third item for Swain, just leave him at two items. On your main carry, you generally want three items. So even though you're running Dark Flight, you probably want three damage items on Rengar. You don't want him to have like a ZZ Rot portal, for example. This version here, we are running the four assassins. This is if you're going for a three star Rengar, it's really strong. Uh, you could also do Nyla as a secondary carry. On the next build, this is more Swain centric. So instead of running, so you definitely would want to focus on putting three items on Swain. The third item I like best is Archangel stat because he's going to be living a long time. So he could definitely build up the stacks for it. Another option would be something like Titan's Resolve. I do prefer the Archangel staff a little bit more because the Morello really does work a lot in the beginning of the fight and Archangel's carries the end a lot more. Uh, whereas Titan's Resolve, it doesn't have as big of a cap as Archangel's staff, but they're both very similar. They do pretty much the same thing. Uh, so instead of running four assassins, we take out two of them, we add in the Sejuani and the Graves. Sejuani is just to give Cavalier and you get the guild health bonus as well. And then Graves is just there if you want to do an Aphelios carry. But Graves can almost be anything. You could also do a semi-carry Graves, that works as well. The way to play this build is standard leveling if you're focusing on Swain, re-rolling for Rengar if you're focusing on Rengar. You guys remember how we looked at the Mirage build before and that one went for Nunu 3 star. So if you're playing the Swain build and you did standard leveling, you could opt to stay at level 8 instead of going to level 9 and then just slow roll for Rengar 3 star. That's definitely an option too. Again, you don't need 3 items on your Dark Flight carries. And here are the sacrifice items we have here. I'll list more out as I believe they will be nerfing these items in this interaction. So we'll have to see how that shapes up later on. 
But Rengar items, i.e. Bloodthirster, Hodge, Titan's Resolve, Rageblade, Giant Slayer, Last Whisper, Quicksilver. Swain items, Morello, Archangels, Titan's Resolve, Redemption, Stoneplate, Sunfire Cape, and Dragon's Call. The core of this build is just 6 Stark Flight, and then after that you could pretty much put in anything. Augments, any cybernetics really good because whenever you're getting like a bunch of different items, obviously you're going to get a ton of value from that. Electro Charge, really good when you're doing Swain Carry. Assassin's Crown, if you're going for Rengar stuff. Weak Spot, decent. Uh, Celestial Blessing, good for Rengar so you don't have to build a Bloodthirster on him. And Ascension, really nice for Swain because again, he just lives so damn long. Onto the next build, we have Graves and Nyla. This is like the Stand United build, if you will. And that's because we're not really going deep into any augment. This is kind of just like the flex four cost carry comp. There's always one of these in every set. Last set, it was like the Corky Sona type of stuff. But both Graves and Nyla, they're going to be doing a lot of damage. Ida's main tank here, but a lot of substitutions here. This comp is actually hard to play. I should change this to hard. But as you guys can see, a lot of different items you can choose here. You definitely want to be going into something like a fast eight to get the tier four units. Uh, that's going to be Idas, Nyla, and Graves because literally everyone else doesn't really matter. You could splash in any type of unit. The only reason why these people are in here is Kiana is an assassin, so and she's the only one who provides CC, so she just works great with Nyla. But if you don't have items for Nyla or you don't have a two-star Nyla, you don't need to run Kiana. In fact, you don't even need to run Nyla. You could literally run anything else. Again, this comp has a lot of different variations, so it's too much to put on paper. It really depends on what your augments are. You just kind of play whatever four costs you hit and lean towards that a lot. Onto the next build, we have Lagoon. So this is the Lagoon Soam right now. This is with six Lagoon and five Mages, but you could definitely go for the nine Lagoon version. Both are fine and dandy. I like the Mages a bit more because there are a lot of things you could splash in. So for example, Soam and Talia are both Mages. Then for your main tank, Silas gives Bruiser for Malphite. So you already have three Mages right there. After that, Zoe's just one of the best support units in the game, so you pretty much have to play her if you're running any sort of mages. So then you're stuck at 4 out of 5 mages, so you might as well just put in one more. That's why I like the 5 mage version. But you could do other things such as taking out Silas and putting in Idis and Zac to get Guardian as your main tanks instead, and then drop down to 3 mages. So I've already given you guys 3 different versions of Lagoon Soam that you could play. Items for Soam, blue buff definitely almost mandatory. Hextech Gunblade, you just need one healing item on most of your carries nowadays, and then Jeweled Gauntlet is just going to be adding the most damage. Jeweled Gauntlet is really good on champions that don't have to rely on one big burst. So Soam casts a ton of times, so if she ever gets unlucky and doesn't crit, it doesn't really hurt her that much, so you just get a ton of damage in the long run because you don't really care about the variants. Silas main tank, just standard tank items there. And then again, a lot of people are building ZZ Rods. If you don't know who to put it on later in the game, just drop it on Malphite. Positioning is a little weird because you want to maximize the Seraphine buff, so that's why we're kind of in this weird pattern over here. The most important thing about this comp is hitting Silas too, but again, if you do the Idis thing that I talked about earlier, you could switch into the Guardian version. I list out a couple of other options for Soam here in terms of itemization, but again, the core is really just 6 Lagoon, Blue Battery is really good, that means you don't need the blue buff, Luden's Echo, you're running Mages after all. Mage Augment's good, Cybernetic Uplink, Portable Forge, and Radiant Relic because you're running dragons, so put the Portable Forge item on Soam or Silas. Onto the next build, we have the C tier. So C tiers, again, they're okay, but like, they're just better things to run. Maybe people discover better ways to play these comps, in which case they'll rise up to the B, A, or S tier. But right now, I do really think these are C tiers. You could still steal some wins with them though, so I'm going to go over just two of them. This is the 8 Astral version revolving around Aesol carry and or Lux carry. So you could either re-roll for Lux 3 star, or just go level up and go for Aesol 1 or 2. Main tank's going to be Silas, but yeah, this build, it's like... It's a little weird, you do get a lot of buffs from 8 Astral though, so you kind of have to get a little lucky with this comp. The only requirements obviously are getting a lot of Astrals early on, I already talked about Lux or Aesol, and then the core is, is really just 8 Astral plus Silas, and then you just get the same augments that we were talking about before with the Soam build. It's mainly just the Mage stuff, which is really helpful in this team comp. Next up, we have Reroll Cannoneer. I am going to include two builds. One is with Zeri, one is with Aphelios. The first build we'll go over is the one with Zeri. So this one is with Namsi with Cannoneer. So you get Tristana, so you get four Cannoneer from that. You get the two Dragon trade from Idis and Namsi, and then Guardian, that's from Rakan and Idis. And then you also get the bonus item from Shimmer Scale because Idis, again, is a dragon. 
Uh, Zeri is going to be your main damage dealer. Whenever you're running Cannoneers, that's a really heavily attack damage focused type of trait. So that's generally going to be the ones where you want, i.e. Last Whisper and then something like a Rage Blade. Uh, but there are a bunch of different items you could do on her. Pretty much any damage item will do, but these are just, I think, are the best right now, especially if you do not have weak spot. Next build up, we're going to go into the Aphelios version. This one's with two Dark Flight and four Cavalier. So you switch up the tanks a little bit. You run Rel, Nunu, and Hecarim. You sacrifice Sejuani with the ZZ Rot in the middle again. And then I do the classic Aphelios build of Rage Blade, Runons, and Death Blade. And then Graves could be a secondary carry if you end up hitting him later on. Going into how to play the comps, you are going to do a reroll. So you want to reroll for Zeri 3 star at level 7 and Aphelios at level 6. If you're running Zeri, Triforce is amazing because, I mean, she's a 3 cost unit, so you can't really be asking much more than that. Best Friend's really good because you have a lot of attack damage from Cannoneers, so getting attack speed's really nice. Cannoneer Augments obviously is what you want. Portable Forge, Celestial Blessing, good for healing, and Radiant Relic, so that's good if you're running uh, the Dragon and Idis. And Radiant Relics are good in both comps. It's slightly better in the one up here. That's all the comps we have, but as for items, I really like Bow Start right now. Bow Start just... Like, Rage Blade, Static Shiv, really good in the early game right now. If you checked out my Tips to Climb video at the start of a set, you want to focus on a lot of early game items, and Bow just builds a lot of them. So that's why I like it right now. Same with Belt. Belt kind of does the same thing. After that, Tier. Again, I like Static Shiv. I like Hand of Justice. I like the new Protector's Vow item, so that's why I like Tier right now. A Sword, if you're going AD, you need Sword. Chain, maybe Chain could be a little higher, but honestly, all these items... I'm definitely fine with, I just prefer getting anything except for the glove right now. Glove is definitely my least favorite, uh, after that being Negatron, but pretty much any of these top six, I'd be fine with in like most cases. But just to summarize, up at the top, we have again, Olaf Zaya. I know, I know, it's the same thing from last set, but, but the meta probably will be changing a lot in the future. So I'm going to keep this site updated every single Friday as per usual, so definitely like bookmark this page or whatever. Pull it up when you're in a game if you need to but at least we do have the dragons coming in in the s tier it makes sense that like finally in the dragon's land set dragons are finally like a real comp uh a tier pantheon solid four cost dragomancer lee sin solid reroll mirage deja same thing with pantheon jade same thing built different same thing and then b tier everyone hates on zippy but zippy's all right i guess uh, Dark Flight definitely got nerfed a lot. This was one of the best PBE comps, but maybe it makes a comeback if people figure out the item thing a little bit better. Graves Nyla, just the typical flex comp, and then Lagoon. Ah, just not feeling the mages right now, honestly. Like, both Lagoon, Astral, and the mage builds, they're just kind of at the bottom right now. But let me know your thoughts down below on what comps you're going to be playing. Am I missing any comps? Of course, I'm going to be trying to add in as many of these other ones as I can, so we definitely will have them in the future. I played just two games of Kaisa Reroll. It was, it was quite fun. Uh, one game I was contested in, though, but it definitely is a fun thing. Uh, but definitely just experiment a lot. You don't have to follow what's in a tier list in order to play. You could just play whatever you want, whatever you're hitting that game, because um, that's really what TFT is about a lot of times. But that's going to be it for me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and I'll be coming out with a lot of guides in the future, so subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you all later. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe, and of course smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.